with social media, I think the most alarming piece that we see developing is such a reliance. If you're growing up on social media, then you really don't develop that inner core, the piece that helps you regulate on your own. You are always looking to an outside world. You're always, there's something external always happening, and that's how you think you should monitor yourself. And what happens with that is there's very little real connection to who you are and, and how you might hold yourself accountable. So I think that's the biggest danger of social media is um, a lack of accountability and real sense of security and, and self-worth. Uh, I would really encourage parents to not worry so much about social media because we're not taking it away, we're not gonna get rid of the phones or the texting or the Snapchats. But what I want them to think about is their job is really to raise kids with a certain core set of values and a foundation that it doesn't matter what's happening or advances come in social technology, they still have developed a person who is really confident in themselves. And that comes through really having them um, practice being a good friend, inviting your date live, having them come into the house, meet your parents, shaking people's hands, um, not breaking up over text, those kind of things, the live interactions of relationships is what parents need to pra make sure their kids practice. Is there a certain age that is too late for an adolescent to build that relationship with their parent? That's a good question. I would like to think in a perfect world, no, there's never too, it's never too late. But in reality, I think what's most important is if there's a lot of damage that's been done to an adolescent's self-esteem and they really have the core belief that their parents don't believe in them or think they're worthwhile, that's really hard to overcome. And the depth of the relationship might be forever kind of harmed. It'll be, okay, I'll see you on Christmas or, you know, Thanksgiving, but otherwise, you know, that's really it. You're just my mom and there's no real relationship there. So I would say, I would urge parents to try and think about that relationship piece as soon as they can. I think the myth most parents would believe to be true is that my kid is just doing risky things just to make me mad. They're just misbehaving to make me mad. And um, what I, I think is most important to remember about that is while they may have some sense you're not gonna be really pleased with them, adolescents by and large really think about or are motivated by what will be the reward, what will be most gratifying. They don't think about the consequences in advance. They're hardwired. We do know now that their brain is hardwired to sort of jump to the end. How fun will this be? What's the reward? And they forget, they don't even pick up on all the stuff in between that could be, well, what if we wreck the car or, all these other things that could happen, they don't, they don't think of those. So I think if parents could think about that and help preview those and remember that when they do something really stupid, most often and they'll say, oh, I didn't think about that. They really didn't think about that. They are not hardwired to think of, oh, well, if I make this decision, this is what could possibly happen. They're just like, I'm in. And that is, you know, that's sort of a, evolutionary thing as well where we if you think about adolescents are getting ready to be adults so it it does make sense from a neurobiological perspective that they are then um, hardwired to do something more risky more creative kind of go to an end that they wouldn't something new novelty seeking is what a teenager is doing and so um, that would help you get to the next stage of being an adult.